Hallo bei TechStage. Wir sind hier zurzeit auf der Computex in Taipei und derzeit in einem Meetingraum von Nvidia und neben mir steht Matt Webling und er wird uns jetzt was über den Tegra 4 erzählen. Matt, uh, you were launching, uh, presenting the Tegra 4 processor at the CES show in January and there are still no devices. So what's the problem? Uh, there's no problem. We're right on the verge of having devices. At CES we said... Uh, Q2 of this year, and we're happy to say uh, Shield is going to be shipping uh, this month in June. So that's uh, that gets into the Q2 time frame. Uh, and then we'll have tablets. We've uh, we've actually announced three tablets in the past couple weeks based on Tegra 4, a HP tablet, an Asus tablet, and a Toshiba tablet, all Tegra 4-based tablets. Um, and they're going to start shipping, the HP starts shipping in July. So you're right on the verge of seeing some uh, awesome Tegra 4 devices. Why are they awesome? They're awesome because... Uh, Man, I mean, Tegra 4 is the world's fastest mobile SSC, bar none. So fastest CPU, super fast web page browsing, things like that. And then, of course, people naturally expect GPU and graphics from NVIDIA. So Tegra 4 is about 6x the overall horsepower, GPU horsepower, compared to Tegra 3 even. And Tegra 3 was a GPU monster. So you're going to see great games, great graphics, uh, more Tegra Zone games for those that know about Tegra Zone. Um, so just really a, a better overall experience for those devices. How can web browsing be faster? Oh, we have tricks. We have tricks. Um, we have a much faster CPU built in uh, for number one. And then and then the second one, and we demoed this at CES, and we actually have demos of this on the HP tablet also. Um, our software, our software team has really done a lot, uh, a lot of work in optimizing browsers, the Android built-in browser that comes on the HT, HP tablet, for instance. Um, it's, it's about two to three X faster than a Nexus 10 browser. And if you guys know about the Nexus 10, that's sort of the leading Android tablet today. Um, so just blazing fast web, web experience. Uh, you plan to launch, uh, not you, but manufacturers plan to launch smartphones, budget smartphones or mid-range smartphones with Tegra as well. This is the same chip as in the tablets uh, they will, that will come out within the next weeks? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. There's, there's two types of Tegra 4-based phones coming. There are going to be premium phones based on Tegra 4. And those are going to come out second half of this year. Um, those are going to be, you know, just rocking very fast, super phone quality phones, uh, all based on Android. Uh, and then in the Q1 timeframe of next year, we're going to have our first devices, mainstream smartphone devices, based on a chip called Tegra 4i. And it's part of the Tegra 4 family. Um, it's, a, it's a different chip. It uses a lot of the same capabilities built into Tegra 4. So it has uh, nearly the same graphics performance built into Tegra 4. And, uh, do, you have, do you have a figure about that? What means nearly? Um, it's got, let's put it this way, Tegra 4 has 72 GPU cores. Uh, Tegra 4i has 60 GPU cores. Uh, and then Tegra 3, for reference, had 12. Right? So it's substantially 5x the performance of Tegra 3 from a GPU perspective. Uh, on the CPU side for Tegra 4i, it's about 80% the performance of a Tegra 4. So um, it, it, it's targeted at a different market. So it's going to go into, Tegra 4i is going to go into phones that are you know, sub $200, um, uh, but also very high performance. So it can support a 1080p display, um, but still a sub $200 phone. When will we see those phones? Um, they'll first start to come out in the Q1 of 2014 timeframe. Um, we're eagerly trying to bring that in. I mean, I would love to see a phone by the end of this year based on that, but realistically, it's probably the Q1 timeframe. Okay. Uh, what will the phone be will be called? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who will make it? Make it? <laughs> also, good question. Uh, yeah, we we we're, we're working on many different many different designs. Okay. One of the one of the cool things actually at the show this week is we're showing um, an ODM uh, phone reference phone built on Tegra 4i. Um, so it's not our reference phone. It's a it's a partner's phone uh, that's built into a chassis and a phone uh, design that you'll eventually see a real brand on and really shipping. So uh, we're getting a lot of ecosystem excitement, and that's all about Taiwan, right? Getting ecosystem, and there's partners really excited about Tegra 4i. Uh, so you'll start to see phones like that shipping uh, in Q1. Okay, and uh, what is the next thing coming? Uh, from NVIDIA, the next thing coming is a, a chip on our roadmap called Logan. And the, the cool part about Logan um, is that it is the first chip from NVIDIA that, that really integrates the GPU core from our desktop products and our notebook GPU products called Kepler. So Kepler is the NVIDIA graphics architecture that's been shipping uh, for about a year now, um, but it is uh, bar none the best performance, best efficiency GPU on the market today. Uh, and this is really the first GPU, GeForce level GPU coming into mobile. So that's Logan. Um, it'll support all the latest and greatest standards. It'll also be our first CUDA GPU or GPU compute GPU um, going into a mobile SSC. 
Uh, so that's going to just deliver a wealth of new experiences. Obviously, the gaming piece is going to be huge, um, getting closer and closer to PC style, console style gaming. Uh, but then also just new experiences because this is a now a, a really a GPU compute uh, product. What does it mean? Does it just boost the performance to like a notebook performance? So I, in the future, I will plug in my monitor or my big HDTV into my cell phone and I will play on there. I don't yeah, know, that's yeah. definitely that's definitely a use case scenario. Um, you now have the you will now have more of an ability to hook up multiple displays. Multi multi screens, basically, the way you can think about it to your to your mobile device. Um, there's other so let's say you have many, you know multi different windows, multiple different windows open at the same time, or you're gaming. Let's say you're sitting back from your TV and you're actually gaming on it, and it's being projected on your TV at a very high resolution. Uh, but there's also just new scenarios, use case scenarios in general, right? You can think about um, your mobile device has multiple different sensors built into it, right? And now we can do all this parallel processing on the GPU from all of these sensors, whether it's your camera sensor or, or anything, um, you can now do a lot more on your GPU, which ends up delivering new use cases, um, whether it's AI related use cases or computational photography related use cases, things like that. Could I call Logan Tegra 5 and would you do the same? I would not call it anything yet because we haven't launched it. We're still very focused on Tegra 4 and getting our Tegra 4 products out there. Okay, last question. Um, on this show, we have seen a lot of products uh, showing up with Intel processors. What do you think, think about that? Is this a problem? Will this be the next big competitor for you? Uh, I think the, the mobile space has obviously lots of people interested in doing well in mobile. Um, I think we just have to, to wait and see what the products look like when they ship. Um, really be able to play with them, uh, understand what the use cases are, what the experience is going to be from a performance perspective, from, uh, from a battery life perspective. Uh, the other interesting thing to think about is um, the entire Android ecosystem has been built on ARM. Some people call it ARM Droid because it is so ARM focused. Um, 84% of the free games, of the top games, top 25 games, 84% of those use native ARM code. Uh, about 64% of the free apps use native ARM code. So when you're talking about putting an x86 processor into a mobile device, um, there is some level of work that needs to be done that is not inherently there um, from developers. They just aren't coding for that. So we'll see what happens. But it's a it's a ecosystem change that's going to need to make that successful. And and right now, it's that ecosystem isn't there. So if I buy a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 with the Intel processor, I could not run all the games on Android? We'll see. We haven't, we, the, the, the testing that we've done um, says that's true. But we'll see when it, when it actually ships and we'll, we'll take a look and test it. Okay. Eine sehr interessante Zeit, in der wir da gerade stehen. Und wir sind sehr gespannt, wie es im nächsten Jahr aussieht. Wo stehen Nvidia, wo stehen Intel, Qualcomm und so weiter. Wir sind sehr gespannt und bleiben dran. Thank you very much. Have a great show. All right. Thank you.